Hello, my name is Dr. John Swanson. I look after the electric and magnetic fields issue, EMFs, for National Grid and through the Energy Networks Association provide a lead for the rest of the industry. On 1st of July 2016, the UK introduced new occupational exposure limits for EMFs and in the next few minutes I'll give you the background to this and tell you what we're doing to ensure we comply and thereby protect your safety. If you mention EMFs, the first thing most people think of is probably the suggestions that relatively low levels of field might be a cause of cancer. That's not what these exposure limits are about. All the experts have long agreed that the evidence for any such effects is just too weak to form the basis of exposure limits. And we know from research we've conducted ourselves that in our industry, the staff who are exposed to high magnetic fields do not get cancer or any other disease any more often than those who aren't. These limits protect against established effects of fields at high levels, principally interference with nerves. It turns out that the most sensitive nerve in the body is in the retina, in the eye, so the first effect these limits prevent is a flickering sensation in the vision called magnetophosphines. You can see the actual numbers here. There's a hierarchy of levels. Down at the bottom, if you comply with the public exposure limits, no further action is needed. Then there are successive levels with successive actions attached. The level we normally follow is called the high action level, and that's 20 kilovolts per meter for electric fields and six milliteslas for magnetic fields. International exposure limits have been around since before 1998 and we've been complying with them voluntarily for many years. We thought it was the right thing to do. The exact numbers have changed, but basically we comply. But on the 1st of July, the Health and Safety Executive introduced the Control of Electromagnetic Fields at Work Regulations 2016, so compliance is now a legal requirement and that means we've beefed up our governance. We've introduced an ENA standard, number 10, that sets out everything that needs to be in place to comply with the regulations. Some companies will follow the ENA standard directly, some will copy it into their own safety systems, but we're all following the same provisions. Then we're providing information. This video is part of that. There's an industry standard information sheet which you can find along with lots more information at our website www.emfs.info slash regulations and there's an industry-wide risk assessment which you can also find on the website this is where we take every plant item or work practice across our industry and present the measurements or calculations that demonstrate that it's compliant with the limits or if it's not, what action needs to be taken. But the bottom line is that pretty well everything we do is compliant. The highest electric fields come under some layouts of bus bars in 400 kV substations or climbing 400 kV towers past live circuits and they're compliant. The highest magnetic fields come from close approach to a single phase of a circuit as you might find in a cable tunnel or with transformer tails and they're compliant for the highest ratings we currently use. You also get high magnetic fields with the large air cord coils in some static VAR compensators and this is the one place where extra restrictions are sometimes needed. Any site that applies to has been identified and informed. So we're completely compliant for staff in general, but there are two groups of what the regulations call workers at particular risk. The first is pregnant women. There's no hard evidence that the unborn baby or mother-to-be are actually at any greater risk. But as a matter of precaution and reassurance, we offer pregnant staff the option of complying with the lower public limits during their pregnancy. All offices are compliant anyway, but if you work in the field, talk about EMF issues with your manager when you inform them that you're pregnant. The other group is staff with active medical devices. That can be an active implanting medical device, a pacemaker or a defibrillator or a cochlear implant, 
or it can be a body-worn device like an insulin pump. Passive devices, nails, rods, plates, implants, have no significant extra risk. But active devices, in principle, can experience interference at levels that would be okay for staff in general. In practice, specific devices as fitted to individual people are nearly always immune to much higher levels, but there is a theoretical risk of interference and clearly that could be serious. So again, offices are okay, but if you work in the field, you or your line manager must inform your company's EMF specialist or occupational health provider so that we can do an assessment. So we're compliant with these regulations and thereby we believe we're doing our bit to keep you safe and healthy. But if you do worry that you might be experiencing symptoms attributable to EMF, please don't hesitate to contact Occupational Health. Remember there's lots more information at www.emfs.info. Thank you for listening and do stay safe.